All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number four. In the first equation, that's already written in slope-intercept form. So we're going to go ahead and graph this in slope-intercept form. The end here says minus three. So on the y-axis, put a dot at negative three. Slope here says four, as in four over one. Because remember, slope is always written as a fraction. So slope of four over one means I'm going to go up four, three, four, to the right one. And again, you can repeat that up over and over and over again. I can go up another four, write another one. Up another four, write another one. And once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and connect my points. And I'm going to try and do that just as neatly as I can. And so I'll get my straight edge out here. And with that, Go ahead and connect my points. All right, now, second equation, you've got some choices. The second equation is not really set up for slope-intercept form. So what you could do, you could either A, manipulate the equation to make it into slope-intercept form, or you could use another method of graphing. This equation is not actually poorly set up for the uh, intercepts method. In the intercepts method, hopefully you recall because we've already learned this, what you're going to do is you're going to go through and let each variable equal zero once. And you're going to find the other variable. And that other variable there represents the uh, intercept, the value at which it will cross each axis. So when I let x equal zero, that means this is going to go just go away. And it's going to say 2y equals negative 4. So what value of y makes that work? Well, it's obviously negative 2, because 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So y value is negative 2. That means the line that I'm about to make goes across the y-axis, negative 2. All right, other way through, I'm going to let y equal 0. If I let y equal 0, that's going to disappear. It's going to say negative 3x equals negative 4. Well, what value of x is going to make that work? Well, the value of x that's going to make that work is 4 thirds. 4 thirds being the same as 1.3 repeating. So something right about there. And once you plot your intercepts, again, you want to go ahead and connect your points here. And as I connect my points with my straight edge here, I get something that looks about like that. So the point of intersection I see is right about in here looks like it's at about a half comma negative one and a half and since that's what we're seeing here that's what we're going to write down as my solution. The point of intersection happens when x is one half and the y value is negative one and a half. example the story problem here. Number five. In the story problem for number five, what it says here is that two skaters are racing towards the finish line of a race. The first skater has a 40 meter lead and is traveling at a rate of 12 meters per second. The second skater is traveling at a rate of 14 meters per second. How long will it take for the second skater to pass the first skater? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, set this up with a little sketch. All right, it says the first skater starts off and they have a 40 meter lead. So I'm going to go ahead and come off down here to my y axis and start that skater off at 40. And what it says is that they're traveling at a rate of 12 meters per second. So every second they're going to have go up by 12 meters. Now as you can see here, the graph if we look at the x-axis is actually set up to go up by 5. So every 5 seconds, what would that be equivalent to? Well if they're doing 12 meters in a second, that means they're doing 60 meters every 5 seconds. So if I sketch this out, 
At five seconds in, they're going to go another 60 meters, so they're going to be at 100. Another five seconds out, they're going to be at 160 meters. Another five seconds out, and they're going to be at 220 meters. Another five seconds out, and they'll be at 280 meters. Another five seconds out, and they'll be at 340 meters, which is right near the top of my graph because my top marker there only goes to 350. So there's that all set up. All right, skater B. Skater B is starting at zero because remember, they're saying that here, the first skater had the 40 meter lead. Now they're going 14 meters a second. Again, since my graph is going by fives, I want to go ahead and put this in terms of fives. Which means for this particular question, all right, that means they're going to be traveling 70 meters every five seconds. 14 times five is seven. So they start at zero. Five seconds in, they're going to be at the 70 mark. Another 5 seconds in to 10 seconds, they'll be at the 140 mark. You can see they're catching up. At the 15 second mark, they're going to be at 210, getting closer still. Another 5 seconds in, they're going to be at 280. Well, we have a point of intersection here because at 280, they're both at the exact same spot, which turns out to be 20 seconds in. So when they're asking us how long will it take for the second skater to pass the first, we're going to take 280.